Welcome to Science News from the American Heart Association Scientific Sessions in Dallas. My name is Mark Krieger. I'm from the Cardiovascular Division of Brigham Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School in Boston. And with me today is Dr. Christopher Cooper, who's Chairman of the Department of Medicine at the University of Toledo, and Dr. Lance Dworkin, who is Vice Chair of Medicine at Brown Medical School. And we're here today to talk to you about the CARL trial. Uh, Dr. Cooper is the principal investigator of the CARL trial, and Dr. Dworkin was chairman of the study. So Chris, let me turn to you first. Uh, can you tell us what the CARL trial was about and the principal findings? Well, thank you very much, Mark, for uh, allowing us to speak about this study. We do think it's an important trial. Um, CORAL was a study of patients with atherosclerotic renal artery stenosis that had to have high blood pressure on two or more antihypertensives and they had to have chronic kidney disease in order to get into the study. They also had to have an atherosclerotic stenosis over 60%, but obviously not an occlusion. Um, the study involved medical therapy in all the, the patients. Half of them were then randomized to receive an endovascular stent, the Genesis stainless steel stent. Uh, the major finding, the summary of the study, is that stenting did not did not provide any additional benefit beyond medical therapy. The result of the clinical events, which was the primary endpoint of the study, was basically the same whether you got a stent plus medical therapy or medical therapy alone. So these were patients who had renal artery stenosis plus hypertension or medications or, or they had renal insufficiency. So Lance, renal insufficiency, renal artery stenosis, stenting, the primary outcome was negative. What implications does that have now for nephrologists who are thinking about renal artery disease in patients who have renal insufficiency? Yeah, so uh, nephrologists take care of a lot of patients with hypertension, and uh, we're often the people that would be uh, working up patients for secondary forms of hypertension, uh, like renal artery stenosis. Uh, I think uh, this will have a chilling effect on uh, uh, you know nephrologists really evaluating patients. So uh, for this disease, I think you know the, the uh, standard approach is going to be uh, to treat patients medically and then only to interrogate for renal vascular disease uh, if they really fail medical therapy. And, and Chris, looking for, at it from a cardiovascular perspective, and particularly hypertension, many of these patients had hypertension, endpoints included uh, myocardial infarction and stroke. Um, was there a blood pressure reduction in these patients? If so, how much? And uh, how does that fit into the lack of efficacy in terms of the cardiovascular endpoints? That's an excellent question, Mark, and let me uh, step back for a moment. There's a number of single-arm studies that have been conducted, either single-center trials or uh, multi-center FDA approval trials, which have consistently shown that renal artery stenting is associated with a reduction in blood pressure. We've known that. The difference with CORAL is that now we have a large sample uh, with a control group managed medically, um, and what we found in CORAL is that both groups had a nice reduction in blood pressure. However, the stent group, in fact, had a slightly larger reduction. Uh, if we looked longitudinally across the years, that difference was about two and a half millimeters of mercury. Importantly, though, that did not translate into a difference in clinical events. So yes, we saw a slightly better blood pressure response to stenting than to medical therapy, but uh, the bottom line is, clinical events were equivalent in the two groups. Yeah, if, if I could just say something about the blood pressure. So um, traditionally, these patients are thought of as having uh, very resistant hypertension that's hard to treat. Uh, but with the regimen that we used, which is uh, really uh, a combination of drugs that are all generic now, uh, that uh, are easy uh, for patients to take, there was excellent blood pressure control in the medical therapy arm, uh, only really modestly less than in the stent arm. And I think that's one of the reasons why there was no difference in outcome between the two groups. Well, that sounds like a, an important lesson for physicians as well. Let's get more aggressive about treating high blood pressure in these patients. Yeah, I think uh, what CORAL shows is that if you're aggressive with the medications, that the majority of these patients can be controlled uh, and be remarkably stable over time. 
So there's another important cause for renal artery stenosis, as you know, and that's fibromuscular dysplasia, something we might think about in a, a younger cohort who is not likely to have atherosclerosis. Uh, were there patients with fibromuscular dysplasia in this study, and, uh, and can you extrapolate the findings from the overall study to that population? Yeah, so Coral specifically excluded patients with significant fibromuscular dysplasia, or FMD. We do know that there are some folks who got into the study uh, with incidental FMD. We have not analyzed that data. Um, what I will say is that there is a preponderance of information that suggests that FMD is well treated with balloon angioplasty alone, and I don't really think the results of coral speak to the management of FMD, at least not currently. Yeah, I, I agree with that. All Though I think uh, it might be interesting to look at the FMD patients that did get into coral uh, because uh, most of the studies in these patients have been uh, on people much younger than the population that we enrolled. So our average age was 69. Um, I think most of the studies that suggest that uh, angioplasty and FMD have been in people in their 20s. So, um, but we, we don't really have any information about it yet. Well, gentlemen, I congratulate you for conducting a really terrific trial. This is providing the evidence that the medical community has been seeking for some time now, and clearly it will have important implications for how we're managing our patients in the future uh, who have renal artery disease. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you.